Isaac and Archibald were two old men. I knew them, and I may have laughed at them a little, but I must have honored them, for they were old and they were good to me. I do not think of either of them now without remembering infallibly a journey that I made one afternoon with Isaac to find out what Archibald was doing with his oats. It was high time those oats were cut, said Isaac, and he feared that Archibald, well, he could never feel quite sure of Archibald. Accordingly, the good old man invited me, that is, uh, permitted me, to go along with him. And I, with a small boy's adhesiveness to competent old age, got up and went. I do not know that I cared over much for Archibald's or anybody's oats, but Archibald was quite another thing, and Isaac yet another, and the world was wide, and there was gladness everywhere. We walked together down the river road with all the warmth and wonder of the land around us and the wayside flash of leaves, and Isaac said the day was glorious, but somewhere at the end of the first mile I found that I was figuring to find how those long ancient legs of his would keep the pace that he had set for them. The sun was hot, and I was ready to sweat blood, but Isaac, for aught I could make of him, was cool to his hat-band. So I said then, with a dry gasp of affable despair, something about the scorching days we have in August without knowing it sometimes. But Isaac said the day was like a dream, and praised the Lord, and talked about the breeze. I made a fair confession of the breeze, and crowded casually on his thought, the nearness of a profitable nook that I could see. First I was half inclined to caution him that he was growing old, but something that was not compassion soon made plain the folly of all subterfuge. Isaac was old, but not so old as that. So I proposed, without an overture, that we be seated in the shade for a while, and Isaac made no murmur. Soon the talk was turned on Archibald, and I began to feel some premonitions of a kind that only childhood knows, for the old man had looked at me and clutched me with his eye, and asked if I had ever noticed things. I told him that I could not think of them, and I knew then by the frown that left his face unsatisfied that I had injured him. My good young friend, he said, you cannot feel what I have seen so long. You have the eyes, oh yes, but you have not the other things, the sight within that never will deceive. You do not know, you have no right to know the twilight warning of experience, the singular idea of loneliness. These are not yours, but they have long been mine, and they have shown me now for seven years that Archibald is changing.